Greetings, adventurers, and well met Master of Dungeons here on the Master of Dungeons Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the Master of Dungeons, where we talk all things Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, normally on Tavern Talks, we're reviewing some uh, playtest material, but we're not due for another playtest packet for the new 1DD or TD 5.5, whatever you want to call it, that's uh, due out next year for the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. So, um, since that packet's not due out till tomorrow, we're just going to continue on with our prep from yesterday. If we have any viewers come in to stop by to uh, check us out to chat, we'll answer any questions that they might have. Otherwise, we're going to continue to prep for our virtual D&D weekend, uh, which is the weekend of uh, November 17th through the 19th. Uh, we are playing um, Adventures League that weekend, uh, which is uh, the organized play for Dungeons & Dragons. And you can go to the following website. I want to post it into the Twitch chat uh, to pick up tickets uh, for that event. Uh, that is the virtual D&D uh, weekend uh, on the Wizards of the Coast website. We host it every month. It'll be one in December as well. Um, and we are running uh, stuff from Season 7, uh, which is uh, the hardcover uh, is, of course, uh, the Tomb of Annihilation uh, is the hardcover. Uh, we are doing some, uh, the, events, the adventures we're running is a walk in the park and whispers in the dark. We finished up putting the walk in the park in yesterday, making sure we get our credits in there, all of the introduction, the different sections of the adventure, all of that. Uh, right now we're just doing a couple of maps because the uh, adventure itself didn't really have any maps in it. Uh, let me pull up the PDF over here as well. Maybe. There's my familiar back behind me, getting ready to jump up into her bed. Hopefully she'll jump up in there. Go ahead. You don't need help. You want to approach it from another side? <laughs> um, so I think... Uh, after we get this other map in, we'll just uh, go ahead and do a couple things to populate them. Um, yeah, so we're going to be uh, finishing up putting a map in for uh, 04, Walk in the Park. We're going to go ahead and populate that map with the mobs, the monsters, the NPCs, whatever, and then we're going to start working on 05, Whispers in the Dark. All right, so uh, we're going to get a new map page in here. Uh, we already have one already made up. We just got to put a map on it. Make sure we get a map layer. I know we have a lot of um, maps in here already that will substitute or that will suffice for this adventure. Um, I was just looking for some sort of jungle, not really a forest clearing, but uh, I guess swamp would work. Then there was some jungle stuff a little bit down farther. Some of the first stuff we actually put on our Roll20 account. We started it back in 2014, but really didn't start using it a whole lot until uh, we used it uh, usually once or twice a month uh, so that we could have a friend of ours that lived in uh, Texas uh, jump into some of our uh, weekend home games. And then 2016, we started using it a lot more, playing it regularly. And then, of course, when the pandemic hit, whew, use it a lot. <laughs> Um, see if I can't find a some marsh or jungle, something like that might work. Come back to that here in a second. Need to really actually go through and clean up some of the stuff. <laughs> Probably could free up a bunch of space. Let's just go ahead and use that swamp from earlier. Or that uh, had those two uh, forest-looking ones. I 
We have the old Marsh Battle Maps. Let's go ahead and use this one. Zoom out. Let's fit it to page. That also fights for a path through the jungle. Uh, this is actually not an encounter that's in the adventure, as we are going to be... These adventures are supposed to be around two hours long. You, you can run them about two and a half, three hours, so we're going to add an extra uh, fight as they're traversing through um, the Fury of Chult for part two. So we're going to actually go up and name this map... So we know it's in part two, and then obviously the whole uh, hut altar is going to be part three. Now what we're going to do is we have some, um, during season seven, they had a lot, there was a lot of activity with what's called the uh, guild adepts, which were a group of writers that were writing for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, they weren't, you know, they were going through a training uh, situation, I guess is the easiest way to say it, uh, with uh, Wizards of the Coast. So they were writing a lot of uh, um, what they call guild adept material for the uh, DM's guild. And they did a bunch of different uh, stuff that are actually considered for the Adventures League uh, still legal, uh, but they just basically made them uh, with the, uh, the code of uh, D&D hardcover Tomb of Annihilation. O1 would actually be the hardcover itself, and then O2 was the complete total package. O3, Beasts of Jungle Rod, O4, Seller of Death, uh, things like that. So they had a few different uh, um, things they could uh, you could use. And so I'm going to use some encounters from the Jungles of Cholt, uh, which is TOA 12. Which has some more... Um, Encounters that you can throw into your adventures. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, go through these and find some. Uh, let's go with F. I'm doing a search here. Because of the spirit. Hmm, that's interesting. Doing a challenge. If you played uh, season ten or uh, Icewindale: Rime of the Frost Maiden, that's uh, there was a lot of Chungad there. They were also introduced, really, to fifth edition uh, in uh, the uh, Tomb of Annihilation. Small elemental spirits of the Force. We're actually going to add this into here. Um, we're actually going to add a folder.
We're going to add a handout. Uh, most of these are all one page encounters. page number that it's on in the PDF as well. This way we can have, uh, as I mentioned before, many of these adventures for uh, the first tier one and tier two are mostly two to two and a half hour adventures. We're going to add a lot of these different uh, encounters in the jungles of Cholt, encounters in the ruins of Mesro, such like that, uh, into these adventures to extend them out uh, for our four hour slots for our virtual dandy weekend. And we'll eventually have to put, we'll eventually get around to putting all of the... Uh, um, encounters in the uh, Jungles of Chult in here, um, but we're just going to go with the ones that we're going to be using for uh, this upcoming uh, virtual JD weekend. Confrontation. And as we mentioned, we don't use the quote, we actually use the quote uh, style for our sidebars. I like to actually have the box text in a box, so um, we'll put it in one of these. Just a one by one table. Unfortunately, you do have to, uh, since the PDFs are all formatted differently, we'll just have to go through and put each individual sentence in.
This is 18 check. We're definitely going to drop that down since this is tier one. Double check to see if there's a wand of magic missiles in the uh, hardcover already. I think there might be. Oh, we didn't need those open. Oops. Might help if we go to the token. The token. Page. Okay, that might be a, obviously a little too um, harsh for them. Let's look through and see if we can't find. better plant. Maybe we can have them, uh, I guess the Shafts and Vine is only a CR of three, right? Right? It's got a lot of hit points, but still. Six Twinga. Put this assassin vine on GM layer. Players be coming down this way when the uh, twinga approach them. All right. So the magic 
got to make sure there's a wand of magic missiles in here. There's not, so we will create a wand of magic missile hand magic missiles handout. Uncommon, wand uncommon. We'll have to format it, of course. Handout for us. So we have that first encounter to help extend the adventure a little bit. We'll move that down here into its hardcover. Oops. Then we'll put that in the walk in the park, part two. down there at the bottom so we can just pop it up and it'll pop up the handout for us down here we're all good to go there so we're going to go ahead and continue though looking through to see if we can't find um, maybe another one because that might last a half hour the most uh, the combat might take longer I don't know Most likely, uh, you'll we'll allow nature checks, things like that, history checks. Um, if anyone happens to be a druid or anything of like that nature, or, or happens to be, uh, you know, native to the jungle or something like that, will be able to discern that they're Twinga, discern that they're, you know, not um, extremely, you know, like evil creatures or anything, just little elemental spirits, and hopefully they'll treat with them and. Resolve it peacefully, but who knows? Uh, no, we don't need to chase.
Chamber of Tigers is a little bit too powerful for tier one characters. <laughs> hmm. Giant frogs. I don't believe, I think we did have that in there, so it's only 100 or 200 gold for that. This will give them a little bit extra gold. We'll do the river hop. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, before we add it into that handout there, let's go ahead and make a handout for that one, because this is going to be river hop. It will be on page, what page is that? Page nine. And as I mentioned yesterday, um, when they prepare hard covers for Rule 20, they always put all of the information in the GM's notes. You can do it that way if you want. The players don't see the handout unless you publish the handout to the players. Um, I just go ahead and put it all right here. Make sure to know what page 9 it is. Robert Aducci is former AL admin. Has moved on since then. Does a lot of 5th edition Dark Sun uh, homebrew stuff. If anyone's interested in that, check him out. Well, various socials. What did we set up on that other one? Perfect, okay. So what we'll be able to do with these random encounters from the jungles of Chult, uh, uh, since it is Adventures League and we are running Adventures League for this virtual TNT weekend, we'll pull some encounters out of here uh, for uh, a lot of these adventures, uh, making sure that they're tier appropriate, of course, uh, and then that way we can extend these two-hour adventures into the four-hour slots that we need um, for our virtual TNT weekends. Obviously, you can also use these for uh, your running of the Tomb of Annihilation hardcover. One table, one by one table, instead of uh, using the quotes. sure to alright well, I think too when you have encounters and things like this random encounters and such like that obviously the uh, authors write them with specific, okay, here's your uh, the per passive perception they need, or the, this is the DC check they make. Like, for example, the DC 18, I think, is a, a tad high, so obviously I'm going to adjust that when we play. Um, as I always say, just adventures are written as suggestions. <laughs> And 
Yes, yeah, so we've mentioned yesterday, uh, we could always put the PDF into the uh, Rule 20 room, but you spend so much time flipping through the different pages of a PDF. I like to take the time at the be before I run the adventures, uh, before I get everything together, uh, before the event comes to uh, have everything prepped. That way if I have to run them again later on down the line, like I'm running this adventure three times. Uh, during that weekend, so instead of me having to waste time every uh, session flipping through the PDF, I have this prepared, and it'll always be in my Rule 20 uh, Tomb of Annihilation base room. So anytime I need to run anything from Tomb, of Tomb of Annihilation, I'll be able to open the room. Everything I need for Tomb of Annihilation will be in that room. I can just copy it and uh, create a new room uh, for running it, for whether it be for a future event or for a client game, something like that. Okay, then we have the Lurkers, four giant frogs. Probably not going to put them, do it, use a map for this. Um, just most, most, uh, probably just run um, Theater of the Mind or maybe just use the random battle map. Although, we might be able to just go ahead and get a uh, map for it. Probably could build one fairly easily, too, with a dungeon draft. A little bit of extra treasure in there as well for the uh, PCs also that have the encounter with the uh, Wand of Magic Missiles, which is nice to give them something extra, and then a little bit more treasure. So we have both of those links. That way, when we come to those that part of the adventure, we just go ahead and pop in uh, our handout there. We've already got those handouts created. They are good to go. Uh, now the only thing we really need to do is go through to our other map for the halt, hut altar, and that is in part three. We just got populated. I believe there is a. Yonti Pure Blood, three Grung, and four Chulton Tribal Warriors. Okay, so we'll go down to our creatures. Pull out a Yonti Pure Blood. to GM layer. Thank you. 
course, the Grung are going to have a chance to be basically the uh, Waduma, the Grung that is leading them through the forest, is going to be kind of holding off the other Grung unless the other characters attack them. So that one's populated, and we have uh, that adventure finished. We have the extra encounters. Four. Oh, four. And now we'll start working on oh, five. Dark. Oops. A header four or header, yeah, maybe header three.
rest of the uh, introduction is all the same. So what we're going to do is go to introduction 05 for our next handout. Um, one second. I'm going to copy and paste pretty much. Uh, then we're pretty much going to copy and, oops, not that. We're going to copy and paste this uh, whole entire introduction one here. And then we'll just make the adjustments uh, since pretty much all of this is the same uh, stuff for each one of the adventures. All right, welcome to Whispers in the Dark. Characters. Is that nice for five characters? And that's probably level three. Perfect. And then all the adjusting adventure and everything else is the same. Alright, so that was done there. Uh, as we were mentioning before, we've had players ask, or DMs ask as well, how do you adjust adventures? Uh, the way they do it in Adventures League, and you can easy, easily adapt this to homebrew play as well is you just determine how strong or weak or average the party is. Um, five full characters at AP, uh, APL3, at your average party level, you basically add up the levels of all of the characters, divide that by the number of characters, and that's what the APL of your group is. And then you can, of course, come up with these charts here to uh, kind of gauge if you have a strong party or a very weak party, etc. still some extra stuff that way in case we format something we can uh, make sure to get back to the normal formatting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have a story beat which is we use as a sidebar which again as I mentioned earlier we use the quotes for that the quote formatting for the sidebars So what's going to happen is that this is going to find this um, city of Bonobo. And then um, basically what we might do is probably throw in an adventure or throw in an, an uh, encounter uh, right before the characters get to uh, the lost city. Um, probably allow them a long rest before they get actually to the city because of the fact that I mean, they're going to be, you know, they would have, have a long rest if they get to the city, so uh, something just to, again, extend time uh, from the random encounters and the encounters in the jungle of the Now, I'm not 
sure if this one has any maps. Yes, perfect. This is awesome. Sidebar, make sure we're not going to use that sidebar because this is general features. I'm going to put this in the sidebar. This is supposed to be a separate paragraph. We're just going to go ahead and pop it up here uh, since it's all flora and fauna. Characters arrive. <coughs> Box text. We have another sidebar here for uh, Wadumu, who would be blue. Who's the Grung Guide?
betraying the characters. text. It's only supposed to take 45 minutes, but we could, like I said, we could easily uh, draw it out, especially once uh, we have the uh, map set up. There's going to be a lot of places for the characters to explore, for the players to come through and uh, second-guess things and all of that. I don't want to say, I don't really myself like to leave red herrings uh, for players, uh, but in a situation where you do have time, it's not horrible to uh, use those to kind of... Uh, Allow them uh, extra time to explore, kind of in the uh, immersion. Or ten day prior is old. We'll do that in a second. Central Obelisk. And of course, this is going to have a number of riddles. Um, always keep in mind if you're using riddles in your adventures uh, that players are going to be inventive. So they may come up with an answer that is completely fits the riddle that is not the answer that's provided by the author. Um, I always encourage DMs to use that. Go for that. Uh, if a player comes up with a answer to a riddle that is completely, totally satisfies everything about the riddle, then go ahead and let them have that uh, because uh, trying to get them to get the specific answer uh, is not necessarily the case. Just getting you know an answer that's that fits to the riddle is fine as well. That being said, if you're writing uh, your own riddles, uh, make sure that you don't leave them, try, try to get them as specific as possible uh, for uh, your adventures. I'll do each one of these individually. these.
formatting them to walk through each one of them. This is like bacon, and I'm and I come from an egg, a backbone I have, but not a single leg. That's a fairly simple one. I've got four legs. I have no tail in sight. You see me in the day, but you hear me at night. Armored, but not a nice napping, but not a twig. Always moving, always at home. something wrinkled and wavy, like a, a, the skin of an elephant, perhaps, maybe. For, any, for anyone that's ever lived around ponds or lakes or rivers or floating pools, even, um, the mosquito one should be a fairly easy one to get. <laughs> Let's go ahead and return a few more for uh, formatting purposes. words that stay. <laughs> Forms. Yellow musk zombies.
gonna be entering. Let's go ahead and save it where we're at right now so that we don't lose our progress. And then we have component one, doors lock. We have a fairly large table to put in. Oh, well, I guess not too large. It's going to have a lot of copying sentences over. Take a small little break here. My familiar has woken up. It is uh, after the top of the hour. Take a small little break. About four or five minutes or so. We'll be back shortly. Please stick around.
Fed. She's being a little fussy. I'm not sure why. Anyway, uh, so okay, so we're still working on the um, components to get inside an inner panel. All right, 
so, um... Put this in bold because this needs to be activated first, it says. Oops, not. And then that worked properly. All right, so we're going to have panel complications. So we need one, two, three, four, five, a five by two table. So that is the complications. Again, we'll save it. Then we're going to do the table again. <laughs> text. Sidebar for the trap.
right, so let's see here. Trigger. Effect. Countermeasures. And it is set to re equip itself automatically. I just realized uh, I made a small little mistake here. We're going to have to change this around. It's really simple and easy to do. We just basically put this over the adventure primer instead of doing it in part one. <laughs> My familiar tripping on it kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh, that's easy to fix. We're just going like this. Uh, we're going to go uh, part one. Stepping into... Past. <laughs> Actually skipped over the adventure primer as we were trying to do it through the flipping through the uh, PDF and all of that. All right. Well, it is half past the hour. Normally we would go to about maybe uh, four o'clock. We'll go ahead and call it short a little bit today, but she is going to be relentless uh, for whatever she's doing. Uh, we're going to finish up the rest of this uh, uh, setup for our roll twenty room and get that into our. Uh, Discord server for players for the Virtual GMZ weekend. And of course, we'll be back tomorrow from uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for some dungeon delving. We'll be playing some Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, we do our dungeon delving streams on Thursday and Friday from uh, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern. So hopefully, we'll see some more of you there. Uh, of course, thanks to all of our supporters, especially our patrons from Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron or subbing here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Master of Dungeons. We'd love your Prime subs. Of course, the link to our Patreon page as well as our YouTube channel and all of our social media accounts can be found in the About Us section below here on Twitch. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you want. It is free. We have hundreds of videos up there, over 100 videos, I should say, up there. Uh, like and comment on the videos, share them, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, give us some likes, free tweets, all of that good stuff. Every sub, like, and share helps us immensely. Uh, you can also support us by clicking on the About Us section below and join the Master of Dungeons Community Discord server, where you can help shape an accepting, caring, and inclusive Dungeons & Dragons community. Uh, the merch store is also available. Uh, check that out. We have a number of t-shirts in there, a hoodie, a couple of baseball caps, and uh, some glassware as well, pint glass and some coffee mugs. Uh, that will definitely help support the channel. Uh, support the channel. 
Uh, and of course, we did start a uh, another account on another streaming site as well. We're going to eventually seek to simulcast on both of these uh, things, Twitch and our other place, uh, which is Cake.com. If you go there and follow us there, uh, Cake.com slash Master of Dungeons. Uh, we're trying to get at least 75 followers on there before we start working with uh, streams on uh, that as well. And of course, tips are always welcome, but not expected. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully, we'll talk to you tomorrow for some dungeon delving. Uh, so have a great, wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy adventuring. Take care.